Hi all, good morning. Welcome to my next video lecture on the topic Differential Thermogram of Calcium Oxalate. Before discussing this topic in detail, let us recall the instrumentation of Differential Thermal Analysis. This is the block diagram of Differential Thermal Analysis. This is power source. It is connected to temperature programmable furnace. This is sample holder which consists of sample. Reference holder consists of reference. Thermocouple number 1, thermocouple 2. Both are um, amplifiers. Then it acts connected to output. The function of power source is produce or provide power for the instrument. By taking this power, this Pro temperature furnace provide heat for the instrument according to the program which we given or the temperature programmable furnace heat the sample and the reference in constant rate and whatever be the condition or the environment required for that that environment will be provided by the environment controller unit if the environment required is um, uh, inert environment, then the environmental controller unit provide um, uh, helium, neon, like that. If it's in a radiant, normal condition is required, then that condition will be provided by the environment controller unit. That is the function of uh, environment controller unit. Then if you're talking about reference material, the important is that it is stable under the range of temperature of study. Now, what range is the range of the experiment we are conducting? In that region, between if you are conducting this experiment between the room temperature up to 1200 degrees Celsius, then if whatever be the reference material that we taken, it should be stable or do not undergo any physical, chemical or phase change during this period of time, temperature. That is the main and the important property of reference material. But sample may undergo any changes. Maybe it undergo any physical or chemical or phase changes. During these changes taking place, there's, um, the difference in temperature can be seen. If it undergo any uh, reactions like um, sublimation, it's an endothermic reaction. Which means during that taping releasing that reactions, it absorbs more heat from the system. So the temperature will be low as compared with the temperature of reference material. If it undergo any exothermic reaction, uh, the thing is that the temperature, some of the heat is donated outside. So which means the temper the sample experience more temperature than reference material. So, uh, so that is the difference. So that is one of the importance of this differential thermal analysis. We can analyze whether the reaction is um, exothermic or endothermic. So we need to measure the temperature of both sample and reference simultaneously. So that is the requirement of two thermocouple. So this is thermocouple one for the measuring the temperature of the sample. This is thermocouple 2 for measure the temperature of uh, reference material. And also this uh, dif difference in temperature between the sample and the uh, reference is uh, measured. Um, so, um, and also these data is provided to the amplifier, amplify the key, amplify the data and given to output and output produce a spectrum which is known as differential thermogram, differential thermogram. So that is the uh, output. So in this video I am discussing about the differential thermogram of calcium oxalate. So before we are discussing the differential thermogram, we have to study which are the uh, reactions uh, in, fall in the category endothermic or which are exothermic reactions. Fusion, transition, vaporization, sublimation, 
dehydration, decompositions. These all reactions are endothermic reactions, which means this reaction when this take uh, take place in these reactions, they uh, absorb heat by the sample. So we can see that during that temperature, during that reactions, as compared the temperature between the sample and the reference, it has low temperature. So we get a down curve. If the reaction is an exothermic reaction, then the sample experiences more temperature than the reference material. So we can we will get an ex um, an upward curve. An upward curve is obtained. So, oxidation, crystallization, polymerization, etc. So, let us directly move to the differential thermogram of calcium oxalate. This is the this. So, this zero indicate that the dif temperature difference between the sample and the reference is zero. So, let us see um, from zero to two twenty uh, zero to hundred degrees Celsius. You don't have any change, which means during that temperature period, it do not have any temperature change or it is stable. But we know that at the temperature from 100 to 226 approximately, 100 to 226 approximately, there is, we can see there is a down curve. That down curve indicates there is an endothermic reaction is taking place. What is the endothermic reaction taking place? This calcium oxalate undergo dehydration. On the last video, we discussed that dehydration fall in the category endothermic reaction. For endothermic reaction, it has a downward curve. So, during this period, it absorbs some heat and it eliminates water movement. When at the temperature 226 to 346 degree, there is no change in temperature because that period there is no chemical change. But from 346 to most probably um, 420 degree Celsius, we can see there is a curve. And the nature of the curve, this is an upward curve, which means there is an uh, exothermic reaction taking place. So, we are, from the equation, it is clear that the calcium oxalate undergo oxidation produce calcium carbonate and carbon dioxide. You know that oxidation is an exothermic reaction. So, again, from the temperature 420 to approximately 660 degrees Celsius, the compound is stable. But from that temperature onwards up to um, 840 degrees Celsius, the compound is show a downward peak again which means there is an endothermic reaction is also taking place. That is mainly due to the presence of uh, what's the decomposition reaction. Calcium carbonate undergo decomposition produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So from this, the single differential thermogram, we can see what are the changes happen for calcium oxalate. From that, we, it is clear that this is a dehydration, it's an endothermic reaction, this is oxidation, this is an exothermic reaction, this is um, also an endothermic reaction to, because it's a decomposition reaction. All these data will be uh, provided by calcium um, differential thermogram. Thank you.